Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. It's great to see all you guys today. And uh, my partner, John, and I have a, a super interesting guest today. How you doing, we John? Do. We do. We do. We have a, a wonderful, actually a very good friend of both mm. Art and mine. Uh, she is a professional voiceover actress, coach, a whole list of things. But we've known her professionally for many years. Um, but we want, we want to talk to her today because she and her husband have joined a, uh, not, not joined, I guess, I don't know, we'll, we'll find out the right terminology, moved into an over 55 community. And I know a lot of people who have not reached 55 look at those communities and saying, oh, that's for the old folks. Now, Art, you've been in an over 55 community for a number of years. Right, but I'm an old folk. Yeah, and I was in one. We, My wife and I lived in, in fact, actually down where Ann is, um, for five years before we built our house. Mm. So the person who is really the expert in this case is our guest, Anne Ganguza, because she has recently experienced living in an over 55 community. Well, why so, don't we go see if we can find Anne Ganguza someplace? Well, oh, hi, <laughs> Anne. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Anne, it's good to meet you. Uh, and so first of all, yeah. Tell everybody, tell everybody what you do. I don't think I could explain it well enough. You are a working <laughs> professional. I am. In the I, audio world. I am. I am a voice actress, um, coach, and demo producer. Okay. And you're actually in your sound booth right now. I am, actually. I work in my sound booth every single day. So. Yeah. And, and your sound, I, I know this because we've been friends for a long time. You, your sound booth is in your house. It is. Yeah, I have so a when a, you moved into this over 55 community, you had to rebuild or build a new sound booth mm -hmm. in your what a bedroom or something. Yeah, in a in a second bedroom. And actually, I made it my office. And then I built a booth within that office. And oh, okay. we, we actually constructed it. So it is a booth in an office, but it looks like it's part of the room. Mm. So oh, nice. I was fortunate to because we had new construction to be able to uh, design it from the ground up and have like exactly a custom booth like I've always wanted. And, oh, that's uh, great. So yeah. unlike your previous location, which was uh, you moved into an existing condo, uh, you had to find a build a booth in the corner of your bedroom mm -hmm. or spare bedroom. Mm -hmm. Here, you were moving into new construction. You were the first yes. owner of this condo. Yes. And also, by well, the way, for those of, those of you who don't know what there are a lot of people who started working at home even before the pandemic uh, doing uh, voiceover, but they would do things like they would get inside a closet and they would cover themselves with blankets and they had all their winter coats sure. in there and so on yeah. and so forth. But Anne was a fancy schmancy gal. And <laughs> in her condo, she had actually built this wonderful little phone booth looking kind mm -hmm. of place that she could go into. And it eliminated most of the outside noises. But uh, sometimes I think the garbage trucks uh, on Wednesday <laughs> might so true. Uh, come through. But you've well, got the biggest... a perfect situation here now. Yeah. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, but the biggest problem in your business is airplanes going overhead, is it not? Not even. I don't really mm. hear too many of them. Uh, well, not in not in that booth. Gosh only knows that it's super quiet here. Well, that was one of the attractions of the over 55 community was that it was going to be very quiet. Oh, that's <laughs> and um, yeah, that was that was kind of a side note, but it, it's super quiet here. And I, I don't really when I'm in this booth, I really don't hear much of anything unless there's something right outside the, you know, like a big Mack truck outside the, the window. But that's pretty rare. Right. Yeah. That so happens. what made you and Jerry move into an over 55? Uh, by the way, by the way, Jerry is part of the secret sauce of Ann and Jerry. He's a terrific guy. We've known him as long as we've known uh, Ann, uh, mm -hmm. he, and he's uh, uh, he's in, in high tech visual uh, displays and things like that, or if not in that, in in, in show displays. So uh, he's a, he's just a terrific resource anyway. But um, uh, I I, I want to go back a little bit before you, even before you moved in here, because the two of them met in spin class. We did back in New Jersey. He was my spin <laughs> instructor. Yeah, what a, what a terrific guy. Anyway, enough about Jerry. 
So, John, go back. Uh, you were asking, uh, so what caused a nice girl like you to move into a, a place like this? Well, that's uh, that's an excellent question. So it was around, I'm going to say, 20, well, gosh, 2018, 2019. And I, you know, we had moved and lived in Southern California for a good 12 years. And I had just gotten the the housing market was was kind of turning in a positive way uh, for people that wanted to sell. And I was actually just looking for something new. And because I don't know. I just, I, I don't ever really think I have a place that I'm going to stay forever. Um, I like to kind of move around and shake things up. And I wanted to, because I worked from home so much, I had kind of been there, done that with the house and I was ready for something new. And so it just so happened that this place here, uh, over 55 community was being built and developed uh, from the ground up. And I actually had a good friend of mine who was in voiceover, who became a real estate agent. So I contacted her and I said, you know, it seems like it's a great time to sell. And I'm also looking for a new place. And, you know, we'd love something that's maybe a little bit bigger maybe that's you know because i was in a building i was in a condo in a building and i said i'd like to have a house and uh so she really was the one that was very instrumental in finding this place and showing it to me and ultimately um you know as soon as i saw it i was like oh i you know it's kind of just it hits you and you're like i i have to live here uh it's just in a very beautiful area and we were really looking for community. Even though we had lived, you know, um, where we had lived for a good 12 years, we really didn't have a sense of community and they were building uh, more and more and it was just getting more crowded. And I just didn't feel like I knew my neighbors and I was looking for a community. And this just popped up and, you know, after I had gone and seen the model home and checked out all the amenities that, you know, and, and, you know, got shown around the property, it really, I don't know, it really was attractive to, to both of us. And I basically, my husband was on a business trip at the time. And I was like, I'm putting my money down now <laughs> because I <laughs> fell in love with it so much. And I basically called him up and I said, as soon as you get off the plane, we're going to go look at this place because we need to snatch it up now. And it just, you know, it was our first house together um you know built from the ground up and it was just a really fun time to be able to just you know do what we wanted to do in, in this house and also have even more sense of a community than we even thought um i wanted to be able to know my neighbors and to be able to talk to my neighbors and hang out with my neighbors and this absolutely presents that scenario for us even though um i may be a little bit younger <laughs> um they uh, actually call us the kids. We still work full time, both of us. Um, but it's really wonderful because it's like I have so many people around me that are just caring, wonderful individuals. And they just keep wanting me to stop working so I can go to um, book club and drink <laughs> with them. <laughs> so but, but so um, uh, the two of you are really uh, probably just on the young side of getting in, you mm -hmm. just barely. Thank, thank goodness well, you you, mar you married an older man. Well, I did by, by a couple of years. Not, a a few years. Old. He yeah. he was actually legal. Uh -huh. I was not of age um, uh, meaning, when I moved here. you weren't yet 55. So I no. literally just turned of age this past March. And <laughs> they gave me a big celebration of turning, uh, of, you know, being of age now to be in the community. So, so you're no longer the kid? Uh, no. Well, I'm still probably the youngest. <laughs> um, but but, but uh, Jerry doesn't I'm have to hide now. you in I'm the... I'm legal. Jerry doesn't have to hide you in the trunk anymore. When yeah, he's pretty much. Us. Right. Yeah, pretty much. That's so, right. Yeah. Well, these these communities, and I was uh, I was in one um, right across the street from you, down that hill into mm -hmm. that big. Um, it was ten years before they built your thing, so it's a little older, but it's still that ten year old community. Yep. Anyway, we were there, and uh, we loved it because we had uh, just as you said, great neighbors. They're all mm -hmm. around our age, um, and there were a few like myself, a few people that were still working. But the great majority of people were were retired, some mm -hmm. much older. Uh, they had a travel club, and there was about 10 women and a couple of guys who would, at least once a year, either go on a cruise or go travel Europe or something like that. They were wonderful times. Um, 
plus you're right that the community they have a you can form a club at the drop mm-hmm. of a hat. Yep. <laughs> and the clubhouse, I imagine your clubhouse is very similar. Clubhouse had all kinds of amenities, including a great gym, mm-hmm. uh, yep. meeting rooms, and uh, a lounge area, and a bar, if you rented the, mm-hmm. the main room, a bar not to be uh, taken lightly. Oh, and don't, <laughs> don't forget. Oh, yeah, don't, no don't bars forget, are taken lightly here. Don't forget, John, that your, your clubhouse uh, that we uh, used to do some filming in uh, had a, uh, a Keurig, right. and uh, you were able able to take sample pods home to <laughs> test them. So that, I thought that was quite the good amenity. Yeah. Yeah. We have, I have so many, and John, you know, if in this area, I don't just have access to the amenities here on this property. I have all the community, like the entire, you know, I mean, I don't even know how many thousands of acres of ranch there is here, um, but every community that they build, I have access to the amenities yeah, plus, plus the over 55. So I can go to the pool where, you know, the young kids hang out if I want, or I can go to the over 55 pool. So we're really just kind of a wing in the community mm-hmm. and it's all ind- independent houses um and and honestly i could not have asked for uh, I'm, I'm gonna i'm actually gonna get emotional about it because i could not have asked for a better community to be in in a pandemic because literally wow. you know we closed like february 14th and you know we were locked down in march right early march yeah. and we were able to get to know our neighbors safely, obviously, socially distancing outside. Like every weekend we would kind of make a little circle outside because we have a cul-de-sac here um, and just kind of get to know our neighbors. And, you know, it just was, it was amazing. And come to find out a lot of them are like originally from the East Coast where we're from. So it just really worked out well. And I think that I would not have survived the pandemic where I was as well as I did here because I we really got to know each other um and it's such a wonderful caring community and you know i lost my parents or my my mom um, a few years back and and i i feel as though i have like 25 sets of parents now and it's really wonderful and amazing how we all take care of each other and you know where they can you know just help me out by being nurturing i can help them out if i don't know they they have a problem with their computer so it really kind of is a nice give and take um and and i just i i love it i I, and, you know, I have some friends, too, that were like, oh, my God, you moved to like an, an old, you know, a, a lot of old people there. And I'm like, actually, um, they would put, you know, my younger self to shame because they're more active than, <laughs> you know, um, than I was when I was working. I mean, they're constantly doing things. And uh, really, because it's such a wonderful community, they have a great mentality, um, fun, loving people that just you know this is their time to have fun and i think that it it really makes a difference in terms of the the relationships that you can form uh when people are not stressed out about work or you know um other things their kids are grown up they love seeing their kids and their grandkids and but yet they're not constantly you know being stressed out um by work on a daily basis or you know maybe their children on a daily basis anymore and i think it just it it really I guess it really just makes a nice place for relationships uh, at an older age, and myself well, included. Well, there's so many. There are so many things that we love about you, and uh, we have no. We're personal friends, the three of us, for uh, yeah. over maybe a decade or more. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that you and Jerry are uh, for for John and myself the absolutely perfect example of a celebrating act to uh, a person. Uh, over 50, living longer, healthier uh, lives with mm-hmm. some, uh, some, in many cases, uh, uh, financially more secure than they ever were before when they were younger, when they had a lot of other things going on, whether it be with family or their first home or things like that. And so you're young professionals who continue to work and your neighbors are maybe even if they're 60, 70, I'm sure that there are mm-hmm. some that are well into their 70s, mm-hmm. are unlike our grandparents active traveling mm-hmm, very working walking very. on the trails swimming all the time mm-hmm. and doing those things uh so you and jerry are sort of like our poster children uh for uh, well, celebrating act two you really are 
And, and talk about feeling safe when a pandemic hits, right? Because everybody's taking care of themselves because we were of higher risk, of course, right? Everybody got their vaccination earlier. Everybody was very concerned about being healthy and staying healthy um, because they were considered high risk. We got our we got vaccinations sooner. And I'm, I'm just saying that that, you know, that actually worked out well that we all took care of one another. And we all were like, OK, so do you need help? Do you need me to drive you to get your shot? Whatever, you know, whatever was needed we were there do you need us to pick you up something at the you know at the at the store and so that's the kind of community and neighbors that i have always wanted but didn't have necessarily when i first moved to california because i moved in such a a, a congested area even back then it wasn't i didn't think it was as congested but it wasn't as conducive to community um and i just i just i mean i love the area and i thought it was a great area for us to live for 12 years but after a while you know i think I, I just was like, okay, this was wonderful to me. I have all the respect in the world for my house, but now I'm ready to move on. And for me, that was this this place, and and it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, part of it was it was just a a fantastic, beautiful area to move with a beautiful like model home layout that I just was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. It's you know the way it's laid out is wonderful for entertaining. You guys know how Jerry and I love to entertain, so it's a nice big open space where we can have. Our our neighbors over we can have you guys over we can have big parties and 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 also it's very quiet as a you know professional um, voice talent and coach when I need to record I need quiet and so I don't need to have traffic passing by um, or loud I don't know people outside my door um, it's just a, a perfect ideal place for us yeah it, it, I think people um, who don't understand the uh uh, really, the attraction of a of an over quote over fifty five community, uh, they don't understand the the uh, the value of the community side of it of yeah. how uh, neighbors all get together. We all have when you're in there, you have something in common. Granted, there's mm -hmm. people who are fifty don't have that much in common with people who are seventy, but they all have something in common in that you're very well aware of when you age. You need to. You're you're looking forward to things changing. Mm -hmm. You know, not always for the better. Right. But you're also enjoying life. Mm -hmm. You also have gotten to the point where you appreciate uh, people, things, a house, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and your your hobbies. Uh, so it is a it is a really a, a just a common ground for everybody, no matter what the ages are. And there, when we lived. Um, not far from you. Um, we were there for five years and we had people, we weren't the youngest, but there were some young people, young people, 55 <laughs> years old. Um, but there were some people in their eighties and nineties. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, and, and so we were kind of in the middle and it, it just uh, wonderful people. Uh, you don't, you know, you don't make friends with everybody. It was a pretty big community, but, uh, it was a wonderful experience. We loved it. And, uh, I think the other thing, misconception is people think you go there to die <laughs> oh no <laughs> you know and it's just like any other house you yeah. any other neighborhood you move in you can move out well and and i i like to speak to that because i've never been one to say that this is my forever home i've I've never been that way all my life. I've, you know, I, I live in a place I've always considered even a home. I've considered it like, well, that's a monthly payment um, because I, for me, I can't stagnate anywhere. And I'm not saying I would stagnate here. This is probably the one place that I wouldn't. Um, but I always like to experience new places, uh, new people, new things. And so I literally just came here because I loved it. I love the place. And actually, the interesting thing is that I found the sense of community even before things started opening up. Remember, we moved here. I literally had a like three weeks. We shut down, um, and then there was there was no activities. There was no events. The, I mean, the pools were closed. You know, the the gym was closed. All of the amenities were closed um, because of lockdown. So we really had each other, and it was a really good time for us to get to know each other. Um, yeah. And and these people are not here. Trust me, they're here to have a good time. And I never once said, "Oh, this is going to be where I'm going to be forever. Or I'm going to die." And some people call it. Uh, if they make fun of it, they, some people call it a toe tag house. And I'm like, "But I, <laughs> hey, I, I'll be here if if I mean I love my neighbors. I would stay because of that. 
you know, and, and it, but it, I may go somewhere else. I mean, you know, Jerry and I might go off and retire in, in Italy somewhere. Um, I actually kind of have a, a dream of doing six months there, six months here. Um, but, you know, who's to say? Um, I just really picked this place because I loved it. I love and, and I got to know the people here. It's amazing. There's so many amenities here. And, like, I'm just now experiencing them. So, as a matter of fact, tonight, after, you know, after this interview, they, we're having a big, you know, get-together at one of the parks up there where everybody brings something to grill and we get together. And it's like a weekly – we have two events a week just from the people on my street. You know, one is a Saturday, you know, like kind of a, a social hour, and the other is a Wednesday evening, you know, get-together. And that's just between the people that, you know, I hang with on the street, and that's not – including, you know, all of the activities that are part of the, you know, the travel group, every kind of club you could ever imagine uh, that I can join and and all of the activities that I could do. Well, um, I think, uh, and what you're doing is you're, uh, you shared with our audience uh, the new face of retirement communities. Uh, and retirement is sort of a misnomer. Mm -hmm. It's it's the second half of your life communities. And there are some like uh, where the three of us are in Southern California and anybody who's from here know, has heard of Leisure World where there are mm -hmm. buses and there are people mm -hmm. are skew much older, but they still have plenty of activities uh, for people who, let's say, are less mobile. Uh, but uh, you and when John lived in a, uh, a similar community uh, across the way from you and I'm up in Mission Viejo at a... At a uh, uh, a similar community, uh, maybe 40 years old as opposed to the modern mm -hmm. one that you're in, but it's the same concept. Uh, people are expected to be uh, uh, able to be getting around on their own and it's designed right. for that. And when people get older, uh, and there are a number in my community, especially now, and they, they'll go to a assisted living or they'll go live with a, a, a child or something, but it's 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 a, just a great place to live. It's a normal community without mm -hmm. uh, 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 kids going up and down the street on motorcycles. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Unless they're grandkids that we see. We right. don't, you know. Yeah. Or if we choose to go to the place, if I choose to go to the community pool, that's not the over 55. I mean, I can have that experience if I want it, if I miss it. Right. Um, I don't, typically. <laughs> I'd rather go to the quiet pool. Okay, so, um, so and what you're saying is that... Uh, uh, the, uh, the the over fifty five community just is not cracked up to what it's supposed to be, right? You hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I really do. I cannot. I cannot tell you how much I love it. All right, um, well, guys, as a fair warning to everybody who's watching, I have to admit that if you go to an over fifty five community, you probably won't be allowed to skateboard. <laughs> Without a, no, you have to have a helmet. Yeah, or yeah. <laughs> and a and a mental and a mental evaluation. But but these days, you know, we've got the e bikes, which are all mm -hmm. over the place. Yes. Um, which you know, I mean, they can be they can be a little risky too sometimes. Yeah. But oh, well, I I was probably wrong. You probably could skateboard if you want. You wanted. might. You <laughs> might be able to. I'm not anyway, sure. Anyway, Anne, thank but, you so much for. You're so welcome. For sharing your experience as a as the kid on the block. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For, Thank you. Uh, for people who really don't have a sense of what an over 55 community uh, is or looks like. And, you know, I don't know that they're, I know they're very popular in Southern California Florida. and Florida. And mm -hmm. I, I'm told in Texas, I don't know that they're as big in the Northeast or in the Midwest, uh, Northern climes, but no. they're, they're pretty much all around the country. You know, you know I, I do want to say that the, the one, I'm going to say that my parents actually, watching my my mother, you know, my mother go through over 55 community and then assisted living and, and that sort of thing. Um, the one thing my parents did say is get yourself in an over 55 community sooner rather than later because there's going to be all sorts of like cool deals for you. Um, and it's, and those, there's always like waiting, there's always like waiting lines to get into them, at least up in the Northeast where my parents are from. Um, and I saw them, you know, all the things and the activities that they did. And that was kind of like a model for me too, saying, you know what, this isn't really bad. I had a good time. I would go them once in a while and meet their friends. And um, 
I think that's where maybe I, you know, I, I never really had any preconceived notions outside of what I'd heard other people say, but my parents were good examples, uh, you know, on the East Coast. And, and I actually agreed with them because I thought, well, you can get, you know, I, I think in, in a lot of cases, at least in, in, in the Northeast, um, you could, it wasn't as expensive to be in an over 55 community. And I don't know if that's the case here in, in Southern California, but I will say that uh, I certainly, actually am paying a little bit less here than I was in the community that I came from. Hmm. Interesting. So. Yeah. Well, this is great. Well, you've got you've got a. Uh, oh, let's see, uh, John. Um, I don't think we can make the barbecue tonight. <laughs> but in lieu of that, would you give Jerry a big hug and give him a we'll love? Do. We do. We we miss him too. We're gonna uh, have you guys over for sure. Loved it. Yeah. Loved to. All right, yeah. and stay healthy. Keep working hard. Thank you. And enjoy the community. And, and enjoy Thank your you. commute. Yeah, I know. I love it. Right down the stairs. I don't. I don't even go downstairs anymore. I'm on one level. So uh, <laughs> we have a well, loft. Yeah, if I feel like of, it, I go up the stairs. But you know, <laughs> part of the attraction. Yep. There we go. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.